Hey, Corvette Ronnie. Hey, Lou. Hey, for this episode, could you be Officer Ron? Yeah. Uh, the reason is, this morning we're going to do traffic rules people often forget to obey. Oh, I got a few of them. I bet you do. We'll talk about those and more on this episode of Men Are So Smart. Well, hello and welcome to our show. This is Men Are So Smart. I'm Lou Gallagher. I am Corvette Ronnie. And or we, Officer Ronnie yeah, right now. Yeah, for this episode. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. And you know, some people, like you and I, have been driving for so long that they've forgotten or even ignore some very important traffic laws. So, Ronnie and I have compiled a list of some that people often forget to obey. Yep. Take it, Ron. So, number 10, uh, cutting through a parking lot. So, let's say you're at a, you're stopped at a stoplight, mm -hmm. but you're like 30 cars back. Right. Well, here's a convenient parking lot I can just cut through and get out on the other side. Yeah, cut through at about 45 miles an yeah. hour. Yeah, huh? seems harmless. Yeah. Yeah. Who could get hurt? Unfortunately, illegal. It uh, should be. Yeah. Uh, and in certain areas, they may have a different... Uh, there may be a different law for it, but every state has a law that makes it illegal to cut corners through a parking lot. And like we just said, the main reason is it is highly dangerous. People walking out to their cars while you're cutting through at even 30 miles an hour. It doesn't matter whether it's a shopping center or a business park. Uh, the point is... I see a lot of gas stations. Oh, yeah, on people, the corners. Yeah, people mm -hmm. cut right through the gas yeah. station on the corner. The two-second rule, Ron. According to the two-second rule, you're not supposed to follow the vehicle in front of you too closely in case they need to stop suddenly. If you're following too closely, you could end up running in the back of them, which I'm sure has happened to many. I mean, how many times have you looked in your rearview mirror and saw another car coming right up behind you? It's definitely annoying, but it's also dangerous. Not only that, but if you're caught, you can be fined. Here's a tip. Make sure you're at least one car length per 10 miles per hour between you and others. So if the car in front of you is traveling at a speed of 60, you need to remain six car lengths behind it. And the way to do that is by finding a tree and counting when that car passes the tree, one, two, and count to, you know, whatever, six, six or whatever. Um, a good tip, but you know what happens on the freeway, all bets are off, Ronnie. Yeah. If you leave six car lengths in front of you in traffic. Five cars are gonna cut in front of you. <laughs> and then where are you? <laughs> And, and you know what? And it, it does. And my wife and I were just talking about this. When that happens, we just fall back another car length. And then another car pulls in. We just fall back another car length. I'm mostly retired, so I'm usually not in a big hurry to get anywhere. But, hey, come on. Let's, let's be a little bit more considerate. Next up is jaywalking. Man. Oh, this one? Unbelievably dangerous. Uh, we see it all the time, especially near college campuses or really any school. But jaywalking is illegal and you can be fined for it. And the more you do it, the more your fines will increase. So in other words, your first one is, say, $80. Next one is, say, double that. Yeah. Next one is, say, triple that. They keep going up incrementally. Um, not only that, but jaywalking is also unbelievably dangerous. Pedestrians are supposed to yield to traffic when they're not inside a crosswalk, uh, not try to make the traffic yield to them. Right. So, and then there are very few places, and they're mostly in highly uh, touristy cities, but there are very few intersections that actually allow diagonal crossing at an intersection. I don't think I've ever seen that. Yes. So if you get to a, a very popular touristy place, and there happens to be one attraction over here and another one over here. Uh, but it's obviously only set up if the intersection is set up that way. Yeah. But, and I will tell you this, that a lot of people uh, are, have been killed and hurt in a crosswalk even, demanding their right of way. You do have the right of way uh, if you're a pedestrian in a crosswalk. But certainly, if you see a car coming at 60 miles an hour, don't step out and say, ha, 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 I've got the right-of-way. Yeah. You have to stop. Phasers on. Yeah. 
It doesn't always work that way, sorry. Four-way stops. Boy, in California, we, we just are crazy yeah. when it comes to four-way stops. Most most drivers on the highway have forgotten who's supposed to go first, not me. When there is more than one vehicle at a four-way stop, here's a quick refresher. The first vehicle to arrive has a right-of-way. But if two or more cars arrive at the same time, the car on the right gets to go first unless you're dealing with some kind of an irate driver who has road rage, in which case, you let him go. Let him go. If you feel you need more information on this subject, check out a guide published by the National Highway Trafi uh, Traffic Safety Administration for more details. And again, never demand your right of way. Uh, it's much easier to get your to your destination safely than to be there 30 seconds earlier. Right, yeah. yep. Uh, speaking of having the right of way, mm -hmm. drivers often get confused on who must yield and when they need to yield. Yield has got to be one of the most potentially dangerous signs we have. Yes, yeah, because it leaves a lot open to interpretation, I, right. I think. Uh, right of way must be yielded to other drivers at a yield sign, mm -hmm. obviously, to pedestrians in a crosswalk, to persons using a seeing eye guide dog or a white cane with a, without a red tip, and at uncontrolled intersections where vehicles are already in the intersection. Um, what do you call those things, Ronnie, that are circular? Roundabouts. Especially, you have to yield in a roundabout, please. Yeah, and I see that California is starting to implement more and more roundabouts all the time. Yeah, I see them all the time. Uh, and you know what, when they work, they work well, but uh, it's you have to really be paying attention and not everybody is always paying attention yeah so yeah you just kind of use your best judgment no right turn on red this one can be a little tricky because there are some actually some intersections that allow drivers to turn right on a red in california you may turn right on a red unless there's a sign that prohibits you from doing thank that. you I was going to have to mention that. I'm glad I got it. Yeah. But I'm a good driver, Ronnie. That's true. But if you approach an intersection and you're unsure about the law in that particular state so or Rain, municipality. Rain Man was a good driver, too, though. A Rain Man. <laughs> Wapner. Going to watch Wapner. Um, it's best to sit there and wait it out until the light changes to green. If you don't, you could find yourself being ticketed or being honked at, one of the two. Usually, if you're honked at, you know you're supposed to go. Right. If there are no signs prohibiting a right turn on red, make sure you come to a complete stop before turning. If by chance you turn right on red because the sign was missing or obscured by trees or something, make sure you let your attorney know this if you decide to fight the ticket in court. Ronnie, what would you say is a percentage of people who win when they fight something in court? About 10%. Yeah. Uh, and I always felt like when I went to traffic court, the judge was going to try to find at least one person on the calendar that he or she could let go. Otherwise, people would just stop coming to traffic court. you got to take a, almost a whole damn day off work. And then a judge is out of work. Who wants that? Right, yeah. So the judge is going to try to find somebody on a technicality that they can let off. You know what? I'm fine with it. I get paid either way to go to court, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, you don't... If you know you're right in writing that ticket and they let the person off... Don't you feel that crappy feeling in your stomach? No. You know, here's one of my greatest ones. I wrote a ticket. Uh, we used to have, a on Sunrise Boulevard, an anti-cruise ordinance. Oh, sure. Yeah, I remember that. It was in the early 80s. Yes, and it did not allow you to make a U-turn at any of the intersections because people would go down Sunrise, make a U-turn, go up Sunrise, make a U-turn, come down Sunrise. So they would just cruise Sunrise well, if you couldn't make a U-turn, you had to f turn in somewhere. People would kind of lose. It, it lost their its glitter a little bit. I can see that. I wrote somebody a ticket for making a U-turn. Clearly says up there, no U-turn after 9 p.m. Okay. Guy took it to court. Uh, he happened to be an ophthalmologist. He says the lettering on the sign was too small for that distance. And he had taken a laser measuring tool and measured the distance, and he said at that distance, the lettering would have had to at least been, I forget what he said, four inches tall, and it was only three inches tall. I'm like, come on, everybody can read it. Not only that, but there's a big U 
with a with, circle with a circle going through it. Right. Come on. So even if you can't read English or it's too far away, he knew. Yeah. And the judge let him off. And again, my eh, whatever. I still got paid for being here. This is my hugest pet peeve too, in the Ron. world. Me too. Using your cell phone while you're driving. God, you see everyone doing it. I, it's it's so rampant and it's so unbelievably dangerous. And I can tell when I'm behind somebody if they're on their cell phone, they're all over in the like lane. Like a drunk driver, right? Yes, they're just they're crazy. Uh, most of it's know it's illegal. Everybody knows it's illegal uh, to text and drive. But do you know it's it's also illegal to make phone calls and send text messages even when you're stuck in traffic or other times when your car is stationary. Yes, it's true. Uh, according to traffic laws, you're only supposed to use your cell phone after you've parked your car uh, in a safe parking place. Or in California, you can actually pull off the, the main roadway. You can be on the side of the road as long as it's a safe place to park. Really? Use your phone there. Does your car need to be like in park or... It, it needs to be, yeah, it should be in park. Uh -huh. uh, you should be pulled off the roadway and completely out of traffic, not a hazard at all. Okay. I see, boy, I see people stopped at red lights, looking at their mail. You know what? I get it. Nobody's moving anywhere. But what happens when the light turns green? Somebody uh, might go. Somebody might go, but that person's not going to. Right. It it's, never fails that the person in front of me is on their phone and when the light turns green, they're still sitting there. And then I have to honk my horn and then they get through, but then the light turns red by the time I get up to it. Funny story, Ronnie, uh, and this is not so much cell phone related, I don't mean to change topics on us, but I work at a company uh, that uses drivers to deliver material. Uh, could be construed as dangerous material. I'm not gonna go any more than that. From time to time, we get calls from motorists who call to complain about the driving that is being done. And normally we know they, they could either give us a truck number or we know based on what they're saying because that's something maybe the driver has done before. But the other day I get this call on and the person says to me, look, I don't want to be a worry ward. But I saw your driver in such and such city, and I was behind him. You would have thought they were getting paid by the hour as slow as they were going. My grandmother would have driven that truck faster. Or, and I was ready to say to this dude, are you freaking kidding me? Yeah. Those are dangerous, explodable things on that truck, and you're complaining because he's going too slow? Yeah, that's, that's insane. It happened. I'm not making it up. I thought you were going to go the other way. No. And I get that. But no, I don't get that when you're going too slow. U-turns are another tricky traffic subject because they're a sign and it's posted. But most people aren't sure if they're legal in certain areas, as Ronnie has mentioned. Here's what you need to know. If there's a sign prohibiting U-turns that has their correct size letters, <laughs> then you can't make a U-turn. Depending on where you live, there may be specific rules you have to abide by. For example, Jersey. In New Jersey, law states that U-turns cannot be made when the vehicle's view is obstructed with a distance of 500 feet. Makes sense. In either direction. Yep. Always, always proceed with caution. And that applies to life. Yep. And love. And I'll tell you, the, the one of the biggest dangers of U-turns is that when you're making your U-turn, somebody over here is making a right-hand turn. Right. And they are not looking at you. They're looking at traffic coming this way. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's clear. I can pull out. I've so seen that happen. Make sure that when you are in your U-turn, even though you do have the right-of-way, they're making a right-hand turn on a red. Uh -huh. uh, and they would be found at fault for the accident. But again, would you rather be right or would you rather have your car <laughs> undamaged by somebody? And be safe. And be safe. Yep. Uh, th this is another one of my pet peeves, is seat belts. I think history has shown us that you are more likely to survive a car accident if you're wearing a seat belt 99 times out of 100. And there are a few cases where, yeah, maybe you might be better off being thrown clear of your vehicle, but very, very That's rarely. That's the exception rather than the rule. Very, very rarely. 
according to the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, or NHTSA as we call it, uh, every state has seatbelt laws, at least when it comes to adults. Uh, and if it weren't bad enough, here's an even bigger problem. Those adults who don't buckle up for safety sometimes don't secure their kids either. In fact, NHTSA says that child restraint drops by 40% when parents ride without their seat belts. Oh, I believe it. You got to lead by example. Uh, and the other thing, and it's, man, I've written so many tickets for this. People don't like the seat belt going over their shoulder, so they do this I've and slide that. it under your arm. It's illegal. You could still get a ticket for not wearing your seat belt because the law says you have to wear it properly. Mm. Properly is across your shoulder. Um, and the only reason it's here is to keep you from moving forward just that little distance more. It may only amount to about four inches, but in a really hard collision, that's the difference between your head hitting the windshield uh, or not. So, And you know what? If I could add a caveat to that, please keep your feet off the dashboard. Oh, my God. I see that, and it drives me crazy. Uh, All right. On our list of things, number one, Using turn signals. What are those? It's There's a little lever. It's next to the steering wheel. That's, it, that's my windshield wipers. No, not that one. Well, yeah, it could be that one. But you push that down. Oh. And then what happens is this little light comes on with an arrow, and it flashes like this. I'm going to have to try it, that it out. It probably even clicks. Huh. Not only a lot of people know it's there. Yeah. In fact, it's not mandatory. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's not like it's, uh, what do you call that, standard equipment. Right. Yeah, no, that's yeah. an option. Yeah. Yeah. According to the Department of Transportation, many drivers don't use turn signals. Duh. But failure to do so is illegal, inconsiderate, and extremely dangerous to everyone in your vehicle and to all the road users around you. About 40% of a vehicle's outer perimeter is hidden by blind spots. I had one on Friday on the way to work. So it is very important that drivers signal, even if you don't see anyone else nearby. Right. It's also important to make sure your turn signals are working and are uh, in, in proper working condition. So my biggest complaint with, and I'd still use them, don't get me wrong, but at least in California, or at least where we are, as soon as you put your turn signal on, you want to enter this lane, the person that's behind you sees it as a challenge right. to move up right. and not allow you to move over. That's California driving. That is California drivers for you. I have to, when I go work at the Front Street Animal Shelter, I have to move over two lanes pretty quickly right where all the transition is happening just before I-5 there. And I put my turn signal on early uh, and it never fails that somebody is going to say, Oh, no, you don't. Not in front of me, you don't. No, not in front of me, you don't. You are not getting over, not today. And then you have to slow down, and then you become a little bit of a hazard to people behind you because they may also be looking to merge, not watching exactly in front of them, and, oh, it's a recipe for disaster. Ronnie, there, I work in Woodland, California, and there's only two ways out of Woodland. One is I-5. You should take them both. I try. <laughs> and the other is something that uh, locals call the river road. Oh, yeah. Okay. And on most days, the river road is the way to go. It's less traffic. It's two lanes. It's uh, scenic. Very. Yeah. Uh, and, and the speed limit's like 55. So, right. you know, it's almost as much as the as, uh, uh, freeway. So what happens is you take that river road and then you go around this way at the end of this turn and you've got to get back on the freeway now. And the other day, in rush hour traffic, it was probably 525, a truck, I had to merge onto the freeway, a truck would not let me in. I hate that. I hate that. Seriously, dude. I'm not a challenge to you. Right. I just need to get on the freeway. It's not like I'm going 90 and cutting in front of you. I'm going like 45. I, I tell my wife, I have, a, I have a name for that. I call it it. A rolling blockade. Yes. Because they're where they are. They're going to speed up or slow down to make sure that you're like, oh, let him, I'd like to see him get around this. Yeah, try this. Yeah. And one other thing I wanted to mention too, Ronnie, our uh, generation grew up 
from the time we were kids to the time we were driving age with no seatbelt laws. Right. So in that period of time, it was determined by NHTSA that it was extremely important to your safety to wear seatbelts. And so they started an initiative that was on TV and everywhere, billboards that you'd see. Buckle up. Buckle up. Buckle up for okay. safety. And yep. the thing was, they weren't going after our generation. No. No. The way that traffic rules work is they look to the future generations. They knew they couldn't really um, curtail or actually enforce uh, the laws with the people of our age because that's what we grew up. Now, did we eventually come to the conclusion that it was important? Oh, yeah. Yes. Um, do I buckle up 100% of the time? Yes. Do I buckle up if I'm just going to the gas station for gas? Yes. It's extremely important. And anyone who tells you differently is they've got cobwebs in their head. And God only knows if you get into a car and don't buckle up your children, even if they're not your children, if you don't buckle them up, my God, what are you thinking? Well, and I have written people tickets before for not wearing seatbelts, and they said, you know what, it's kind of unnecessary. My car has all airbags. these airbags. Uh, I'm here to tell you this. Airbags work in conjunction exactly. with seatbelts, not independently right. of them. So if you're in a, a bad accident and your airbags deploy, you might still not make it. And I'll tell you something. When I got rear-ended, a couple of months back, maybe it was six months ago, uh, with my seatbelt on, my head hit the steering wheel. Yeah. So, uh, and I was hit from behind, so as Ronnie told me, the airbags didn't deploy. You gotta be hit from the front for that to happen. Yeah. But I can tell you, um, you know, if it were for that seatbelt, there's there's no telling what might happen. Yeah. I had a nice little bruise right here on the top of my head from where that took place. Yeah. Anyway, here are some driving rules that you may not be aware of or have just forgotten. Let me throw this one last one out there because I see it almost daily as I'm driving around. Uh, and I can't speak for every state, but I know for California for sure, it's illegal to drive with headphones or uh, earbuds. earbuds, anything in both ears. You can have one in one ear. And in fact, a lot of people, I remember when cell phones first came out, before you could go hands-free, a lot of people would have a wired one ear with a little microphone right. wired to their phone. Mm -hmm. Perfectly legal. Mm -hmm. uh, the problem is when you put something in both ears, now you can no longer hear people honking at you. Or the biggest one, can't hear fire engines emergency or police vehicles. emergency vehicles. Yep. Behind you, you can't hear the sirens. Um, is it at best, wouldn't you suggest that having it in your right ear as a driver would be best yeah mm -hmm. by all means uh because you're obviously your left ear is closer to the glass you're going to hear it more likely but even then uh if you're going to even just put one in make sure the level is not so loud that it drowns everything else around you out yeah. you should still need to be able to hear and see things you know <laughs> we don't want to lose any listeners or viewers i should say no uh and if you're not following these rules, there's a chance that uh, something bad could happen, and we would never want to see that. Yep. So we bring you this as kind of a public service announcement tagged by an officer of the law, giving you some great suggestions. If you have some that we haven't thought of or didn't have time to get to, please feel free to share them in the comments below. Ronnie and I try to be very proactive about our comments. Uh, we get back to you. If, if nothing else, we'll at least like your comment to show you that we did uh, we did see it. We just didn't have time at that second to reply. Yep. So uh, please feel free to comment at any time. We'd love to have you as a subscriber. You can do that below as well. Uh, I think that's going to about do it for us, Ronnie. I think so. I'm Lou Gallagher. Corvette Ronnie. See you on the next Men Are So Smart.